So in this video, I'm going to show how to create a stool. Um, I just simply use some scrap wood that I have on the bin in the garage. So right now what I'm doing is I align these wood together to see if they fit perfectly and it produce the size that I want. So I want a stool that has a surface area to sit on um, is 15 inches by 12 inches wide so I place uh, five pieces of um, maple hardwood that I have in the scrap bin and I measure and indeed I do have sufficient surface area right there I start by uh, jointing these pieces of wood so that it has perfect edges so that I can uh, glue them together so I move um, each piece across the jointer that I have this is a 6 inch jointer uh, 6 inch and 1 8 jointer actually and um, I just first when I feed the wood there's a technique though if you don't do the technique correctly you might not get the exact result so right now what I'm doing is when I feed in I emphasize my weight on the in-feed table when the wood is halfway through I emphasize the pressure on the outfit table I continue doing that for all the pieces that I have So this is the last piece. After jointing the wood, I start planing these pieces to get the desired thickness. So because this wood is 3 quarter inch, I just adjust it just a little bit, just one thirty second less than three quarter and then I plane them I need to feed in the sacrificial pieces at the beginning and and at the end just to avoid the uh, bum that the uh, planer produces After I plane them, I need to join these wood together. So what I do is I'm going to use the Festool Domino to do this. I just mark the uh, reference point where I want the domino um, floating tenons to be. I don't need to square when I mark these uh, lines. I just mark just a little, little line, just enough for me to um, make the, the floating tenons in. The Festool uh, clamp is very nice. Just hold it tightly so right now um, it is sturdy enough for me to use only one clam and uh, it is sufficient force for me to to punch these holes I continue bunching these holes for all the pieces 
just the first and the last I just need two holes on each but in the middle I need four holes The Festool Domino saves a lot of time when cutting these mortises. Whereas if you use chisel or any other tool, you may spend a lot of time doing this. I enjoy the Domino pretty much. Believe me, when I do this, I have to stop in the middle and go to the camera and change the angles and change the zoom settings so that I can show you different angles for the project. This like double the amount of time that I take to build this stool. Just only take like five seconds for each mortise. This is a great benefit for using a Festool Domino 500. Mostly I do this at night time in the evening and uh, sometime on the weekend because in the daytime I go to work. This is an action clamp. It's very fast. Now it is time for me to glue up these panels. I apply a lot of glue and I make sure to remember to spread the glue evenly even inside the mortises. I use 5 millimeter by 30 millimeter floating tenon. I use a hammer to tap in gently. The first time the tenon goes in, it's a little bit difficult, but the glue is slippery enough for it to slide in. I apply a little bit of glue on top on the tip on the other end and use a brush to um, spread it out. The glue I use is Type Bond 3. It's really good. Now I insert the second piece and 
use a hammer to gently tap it in. It might be a little hard for me to push these in, so I use a clamp to push them together. I use a wet rag to clean the excess, the spill out of glue, so that it doesn't dry up and mess up my stool. I do the same thing repeatedly for all the panels. The tenon, when inserted into the mortises, it expands when it dried up and it provides strong grip. Now I do a last check, clean it up to make sure that there's no spill. I use four clamps. This is basic clamp, it's very strong. I squeeze them very, very hard. As you can see, the panel is now glued up tightly. You can see the seam, but when I sand them, the seam will disappear. The glue has dried, so I remove the clamp. And now I cut one side of the panel and then flip it, cut the other size to size. So I want 12 inch. So I adjust my uh, table saw to 12 inch and cut. I have to use a, uh, a sled to cut the uh, pieces across. You just trim one side and then flip the panel to cut the other side to 15 inches. I use a square to mark a line and then cut the panel to 15 inches. Now I just measure the panel just to make sure that I get 12 inch wide and 15 inch long. And I don't forget to measure the diagonals just to make sure that the panel is squared. Now it is time for me to cut the wood just to make the side and the legs. This is my Mastercraft miter saw. I use a Freud. Uh, cutting 
uh, blade it's really nice it is like cutting butter with a hot knife very fast and efficient Right now I cut 12 pieces for the leg and I also cut 4 pieces for the side. I drew some uh, outline and printed on a piece of paper. I cut it out and spray adhesive spray to it then I stick it on the side rails After I have the side rail, I bring it to the bandsaw and cut them out. I mark the throwaway area and use a 1 8 inch saw blade. I cut the curve. The Rikon bandsaw cuts very smoothly because it has some power even though it's a desktop version of the uh, bandsaw. I carefully cut out the curve. In this stage, you don't need to be perfect and cut precisely. Because we still need to sand it afterwards. Now I use a sander, a rigid one. It doesn't matter what sander you use, but in this case I use a rigid one. It's an oscillating sander and I sand them. In the meantime, I just glue the legs. Each leg consists of three pieces of three quarter inch plywood. Actually, this is not plywood. I'm sorry. It is hardwood. Maple hardwood. I clamp them and wipe the excess glue.
When the glue is dried, I open the clamps. I remove the legs from the clamps. I put the legs aside and continue to work on the sides rail. I use the uh, electric trammel to sand the side rails. because the curve is very small to use a sander. Inside the hole, I don't have a smaller drum for the uh, Dremel, so I have to sand by hand. Now with the legs, I need to trim out the excess glue. As you can see, my finger got cut from just a razor knife. I was cutting a piece of paper for something else, not having nothing to do with um, woodworking. I just was cutting a piece of paper for something totally different and then I just have a little cut I use a um, green tape to, to tape it up so that the dust doesn't go in that's it I flip the wood and cut the other side because I didn't want to raise the blade all the way up I continue to do this for all the pieces. When you reach over to to take the uh, wood, like I did, you have to be very careful. You should shut down the, the saw before you reach it. If you are not careful, you could touch the blade. After that, I trim the two sides just to make them flat. I do the same thing for all four pieces. Now I trace a simple leg, just uh, some simple design that I come up with on paper and I cut them out. With these cutouts, I stick them to the legs 
so that later I can use a bandsaw to cut them. I use adhesive spray again. to spray on these cutouts and I glue them to the legs after having four legs glued up I head to the bandsaw to cut the curves it takes a very long time to cut these because the blade is an eighth of an inch which has 14 teeth per inch and I cut three pieces of hardwood maple stack on top of each other the trick to do this is not to push the wood against the saw blade but moving, moving it gently, allowing it to cut before you push it. Do it slowly. This is the art of woodworking. Take your time and do it. Don't rush. If you rush, you will not get the good result. After cutting the curves, I head to the sander again to sand the legs. As you can see, sawdust is very little because I have a uh, shop vac hooked up at the back of the sander. I continue sanding it using a Dremel. Summer is very nice. I could do most of this stuff outdoor. Do you see the sunshine? It is beautiful, isn't it? I bring it in and sand them using an orbital sander. This is the Bosch sander. Now I label it so that I don't mix it up. Mix it up. 
which rail go to which leg I label A, B, C, D, E, F, G now I make the reference point where I would like to punch the mortises I take one inch from the top and mark them I use a square to mark the distance between from the top one inch down on all the legs and all the sides I take my time to do this layout work People might say this looks tedious, but I enjoy doing it. Now I use the Festool Domino to punch the mortises. I continue doing this for all the sides. And also on the legs. I carefully punch these mortises. I take my time to do it. Now I try to fit the uh, tenon through the mortises just to make sure that I can dry fit the chair I have to look for the correct piece to go into this leg The first time it goes in is a little bit tight, so I have to use some force to push the two pieces together. I 
putting two legs together with the need of the clam it helped me to squeeze the legs together I continue doing this for all the legs and all the sides This is the second pair successfully assembled. Now I attach the two pairs together using the two sides. Two more tenons. This is the dry fit. This is the result of the stool dry fit the four legs and the four sides together even though I haven't glued them but they form really rigid stool I just try on the top to see if it fits and obviously it fits as I planned it Now it is time for me to sand the top using the orbital sander that I have. The easiest way to remove the paper that I stuck using the uh, spray adhesive is to use a planer just one pass very very tiny skinny pass it will remove the paper easily after removing the paper I sand the sides I use 120 grit paper to sand it I also sand the legs by hand I 
I sit on the Adirondack chairs that I built last year. And now I continue to sand the legs using the Obodo sander. I continue doing that for all the legs. It could be very tough to send these curves. Now I use a Bosch router table and a Bosch router with a router over bit. I route the face of the stool. I use a sacrificial piece to prevent tear out at the end. I route all four sides. This is only the first pass. I still need to move the fence back a little bit so that I do the second pass. It will be deeper a little bit. I use a piece of scrap to adjust the fence that align with the bearing. Now I route the second pass. I do it for all sides. Just like just like how I did previously. This looks good enough. Good enough. 
Now I use 220 grit sandpaper to sand Changing sandpaper is very easy. Now I sand the top with 220 grit. And also sand the leg with 220 grit. I take my time and sand them carefully. There is nothing to rush about. Also now I send the side rails with 220 grids. There are some detail that I cannot send using the sander. I have to use sandpaper to send them manually. To some, this is a tedious task, but to me, I enjoy doing it. This is what Zen is all about. We have to enjoy what the present is. I use a pen and I roll the sandpaper outside so that I can sand the curve easily. After sanding them, I dry fit them again. This is just to make sure that nothing has gone bad during the sanding process. I need to use the clamps to help me to squeeze the legs in. As you can see, the stool start to take shape. I 
I just lay the top on top of the stool just to see how it looks like. Now it is time for me to glue the sides to the legs. I use generous amount of glue. Spread them evenly. Apply a little bit of glue on the floating tenon. Insert the tenon. And then I spread some glue on top of the tenon. If I don't feel that the glue is sufficient, I add some glue. Before inserting the leg, we need to look carefully to make sure which side goes to which holes, goes to which tenon. If we insert the wrong leg to the wrong side, we could end up losing the stool easily. With a wet rag, I wiped up all the excess glue. Hard work at this point will save time in the future. I clamped the stool and leave it overnight. Next day, I remove the clamps. resulting in a very sturdy stool. The next thing for me to do is to attach the top to the stool. I could have used floating tenon and mortises to attach them with glue but for now, I just drill some holes and add some screws to it. The reason is, in the future, if I want to change the top to a upholstery top, then I could do so by removing the existing top and change to the upholster top after drilling the four holes I use some hardwood screw to screw them
Now I flip the chair and observe to see any problem. At this point, I don't see any problem at all. I just find some imperfection and I use some sandpaper to sand it. This is 220 grit sandpaper. I brought the stool to the Adirondack chair and sand it. I carefully sand the legs smoothly. I try to sand the sides of the top, slowly sanding it to make sure that it produces a perfect shine. At this point, I use the air compressor to blow some air to clean the stool. Now I use a damp rag and clean the stool. I should have used mineral spirit, but I cannot find mineral spirit anywhere.
it is time for me to apply preconditioner. It is a pre-stained product that allows the stain to absorb evenly to the wood. Without applying the wood conditioner, the stain will produce blotchy results. I use a piece of paper towel to apply the conditioner to the surface of the stool. The paper is not good. I think I have a bad paper towel. It's very soft and easy to break. to get rid of the paper and find a rack to do it. After one hour has passed by, I use 400 grit sandpaper to scuff it. This is not a sanding process. This is just a lightly sanded because after applying the wood conditioner, the grain has raised. We just want to get rid of the raised grain. Just scuff it lightly so that we don't remove the wood conditioner that has absorbed. Now it is time to apply the second coat of wood conditioner. Apply evenly.
now I use 600 grit sandpaper to scuff it I do this outdoor because the temperature outside is very beautiful I carefully scuff the surface of the stool. I have to do it slowly and remember not to miss any place. I can feel the stool that it does not have any rough surface area. After scuffing it, I use a rack to clean the dust. At this point, as you can see, the stool looks already beautiful. The next step is for me to apply some stain. I use espresso stain. My strategy is to apply slowly on the side first, then the leg, then the top. I just cut the t-shirt for rag paper. I stir it up evenly to get the matter from the bottom of the bottle. I use a small brush to apply the stain inside the holes first.
I carefully apply to the eight holes. Apply a generous amount of stain to the holes. I take my time to do it slowly so that I don't miss any area. Now I use a larger brush to brush on the sides and the legs. It doesn't matter if I get some runs because later I have to use a rag to wipe the stain. I carefully doing it so that I don't miss any spot at all. Even the inside of the sides, I apply a lot of stain. I lift the stool so that I don't miss the bottom parts. The color looks dark, but after I wipe it, it will be lighter a little bit. Especially if you put wood conditioner, the conditioner blocks the absorption of the stain so that the stain is obviously lighter than its color. This is the reason why you should choose a little bit darker stain if you would like to use wood conditioner beforehand. You need to do this slowly and do not rush. What is the point of rushing it and finishing it early and just to find out you miss a few spots?
The pleasure come from doing it, not coming from finishing it. Finishing it giving you gratification, but while doing this, you receive pleasure and fun. I apply stain to the top as well and wait for a few minutes before I wipe off the excess. I think it is time for me to start wiping off the excess. I also take my time to do it slowly so that I don't miss any spot at all. It's a little bit challenging to clean the holes. But I just wrap around the rack and clean it inside. As you can see, the stain color is a little bit brighter now. I also wipe the top completely. I carefully wipe the legs so that there is no excess stain sticking around. This is how it looks, the first coat. I don't forget to enjoy my cup of coffee in the afternoon. It is a very breezy weekend. I now apply the second coat. First, I tackle the sides, then the legs. I just change the angle of the camera so you can see it. I apply a lot of stain as you just saw some run.
a few minutes has passed. Now it is time for me to wipe it clean. The second coat will provide darker shade. Just check carefully not to miss any part. As you can see, it is a little bit lighter than espresso color. The end grain is a little bit dark. After the third coat, I apply some poly. This is a glossy poly that I applied. I just wait for 24 hours before I apply some light sanding. I use 600 grit and apply some light scuffing just to get a very smooth surface. Now, after wiping it clean, I apply the second coat of poly. And let it dry for 24 hours. After that, I cut some felts to attach to the bottom of the legs so that it doesn't scratch the floor. And this is the final result. I love how it turns out. Beautiful chair. I gave it to my mom as a gift.